Welcome to the Face to Face. I'm your host, Genevieve Carlefeuille. The Face to Face is a bilingual series of video recorded here at the Société Francophone de Maillardville. We acknowledge La Société Francophone de Maillardville operates on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Coquitlam. We thank the Coquitlam to continue to live on these lands and care for them along with the water, what is above and below. So today we're talking with Vishad Dipol. Vishad is one of the recipient of the Medal of Good Citizenship. So welcome, Vishad. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to have you with me on the face-to-face -face interview. So, Vishad, I want you to talk a little bit about you. I know you're from South Africa, and you have mm -hmm. quite of a journey that took you all the way here to Coquitlam yes. in British Columbia. Yes, so, you know, like uh, any family, when you choose to immigrate, you choose to immigrate for a better life for yourself, if you're an individual, or for your family. That's what you wanted at the end of the day. So, my husband and I married for 20 years, and we were fortunate enough to, that we chose, we wanted to grow our family, and we had our son via surrogacy in South Africa. We used an amazing clinic and the system worked beautifully and we are fortunate that we have our son who's now 12 years old. We probably never thought we'd immigrate. I mean, it was a beautiful life with our family, friends around us, our community around us. But as life changed in South Africa, we wanted a better future for our son. Uh, South Africa was becoming dangerous in the sense that the crime rate grew, especially in violent crimes. And we said, if we find the right opportunity to immigrate, we should take it. We were very fortunate that my husband had just finished his PhD and there was a call for immigrants into Canada for the express entry. Okay. Um, so we applied for the express entry and that's how we ended up coming in 2017. Okay. Coquitlam is just became home. Like we loved everything about Coquitlam when we came in and saw it. So my husband actually arrived three months before us. And what was so amazing was he decided that every weekend he'll go and stay in a different community and he'll Airbnb just to see what's the crowd like, what the schools look like, what the community looks like, what it looks like at night, you know, especially coming from South Africa, which was a, a country where crime rates were high. You thought about that and you wanted to make sure you didn't see anything that sort of gave you, you know, a bad energy or a bad feeling about the area. So he did that. And I still remember when he came to Coquitlam, he didn't even realize the time difference because we are 10 hours ahead in South Africa. And he was so excited to call and tell me that he found this community that he loved. He was actually at Lafarge Lake. And he video called me because he wanted to show me the lake. And it was like 3 a.m. I think in South Africa. And I answered, Of just course. wondering, of course, like, you know, yes. some of what's going on that he's calling me at this time. But it was just excitement, you know, that he had found Coquitlam. And um, when I came in, which was three months later after him, we were downtown for three or four days, and then we moved into Coquitlam, um, just above Lafarge Lake at Diani Springs. Yeah? So you love the La Lafarge Lake was the, the, the deciding factor. <laughs> I think, like, you know, the community, it just, it was, it's a beautiful looking community. You know, it's a community where you could see that the services worked. You could see the streets looked clean, everything worked well, and he really enjoyed that. I think also in his driving around over that weekend, just it seemed very picturesque in the sense that we had the greenery to match the, match the buildings as well at the same time. It wasn't just sort of what we would call it, a concrete jungle. You know, it was definitely a place that felt like home. And knowing that we were bringing our son at that time at five and a half years old, we wanted to bring him into community that we know we wanted to be watch him grow, enjoy his schooling, enjoy the community. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I love, I live in Kukutlab. Actually, yes. I don't live very far from you, Bishad. Yes. So I think uh, we can agree that we both like it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, and being in our community, I think that um, we, it's a community where everyone makes the effort of connecting. And as long as you make yourself available, 
people will use that and definitely reach back out. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your medal of good citizenship. What does it mean to you and how does it inspire your ongoing commu community involvement? So, you know, I have come from a family and I come from a family of community building and community builders, meaning like my mom and dad come from humble beginnings. They worked hard. They grew themselves into a successful place, probably at a stage when we were maybe between 10 and 12. Because your parents are still in South, South Africa. Africa. All our family is still in South Africa. My parents, Ishad's parents, um, all our cousins' family. We were actually the second only to immigrate out of South Africa from all the family. My dad's brother and them immigrated to Perth in Australia. And then we came out to Canada. So, you know, we came from this family where my dad always believed in helping in, in whichever way you could and within your means. You know, as they uh, worked harder, my parents together collectively, they gave back to community. They gave back in some ways financially, if they could, in some ways volunteering, or my dad owned a construction company, so sometimes just lending the machinery to the company with the drivers. Like if they were building a mosque or building a temple, my dad would send the machinery and then we were in charge. You know, that sort of ethic we saw and we learned from them. And I think that's where it sort of stems from for me because I've seen my parents do it. You know, we always say as parents, we can tell our kids to do everything, but they don't listen. But if we do something, they'll probably copy and repeat. So I think now as a parent, I realize how true that is. And now I do it in the sense of when we immigrated, it's for my son to see it. And my son to know that someday it's important to do this. I think the biggest reason that I got involved in community here was actually just, to be honest, I'm... One thing I missed when I immigrated, Genevieve, for me, I didn't miss things, I didn't miss anything else, I missed my people. I just missed having a sense of community. You know, we fourth generation South African. So being fourth generation South African, you have all your family, your friends, you've grown up with everybody, your community, are your family as well. So when we got here, we missed that. And I remember what I ended up doing. We moved to... Uh, from the Annie Springs area, we moved to Buck Mountain. We bought a town home, we moved to Buck Mountain. And I wondered, there were so many homes in our row, but I never saw anybody, or there was no sort of connection much. You'd see some kids, you'd do some hi or greeting, but how would we actually get involved in that? So I actually threw a little block party. Yes. And all the neighbors came out, we all got to know each other. And it started from there in the sense of building community. I can tell you now that those neighbors from six and a half years ago, we've all moved out of that area. We're all in different townhomes in Berg Mountain, but we still make sure three to five times a year we'll find an excuse to meet. Wow. Because they became our sense of family. And that's where it started from. And then my community involvement just sort of grew because we had the opportunity to volunteer, I started volunteering with Backpack Buddies because my son, it was one of the programs where I could volunteer with my son. Mm. Because some volunteer programs are generally, there's an age restriction towards it. Again, it's understandable, depends what it is. But as a parent and a kid, this was nice to be able to do. And it was also food insecurity, which coming from South Africa and coming from Africa, we've seen a lot. So I wanted my son to still know that how important it is that as a, as a kid, he can open up a cupboard and there's always food. He can open up the fridge and there's something to eat. It's not in everyone's home that everyone's so lucky. So that's where it sort of started. And then I got involved with a Tri-Cities local nonprofit as well, Access Youth Outreach Services. So they would reach out to youth and supply resources that they would need. Or they would hang out at like our Kukutlam Center at our mall, go into the rec centers in the evenings, making sure that kids who could get in trouble would rather hang out with the youth workers, have some friends, build some connections, and also if they needed a resource, they would have it. So I got involved with that nonprofit as well. Uh, still, and it's still in the Tri Cities, doing some great work in the Tri Cities. After that came in uh, United Way, 
when there was an opportunity for commuter builders in 2020 and the pandemic had come in and you know isolation everyone had to stay apart and then the community builders our sort of task was to make sure that we connected individuals who needed a resource like if somebody felt isolated if somebody felt um if there was food insecurity would connect them with the local food bank if they wanted we were doing seniors grocery shopping we we're doing seniors making sure we got their medication to them because they were the most vulnerable at the time as well and that's when actually i was also lucky enough to meet you at a volunteering opportunity genevieve we um, we did work together on a project yes, i'm letting you talk about yes, it yes, yes and that's so great because you know and this is again just how you build your community in the sense that there was a food drive you went down, other community members went down to help community. And in that space, we start conversations and we realize that there's always some folks that want to do more. There's always, you know, I always say the concept of like a community champion. There's always a community champion, people who are invested to want to do more. And from that conversation, then came out Tri-Cities United, right? Yes, and yes. Helping with virtual events in our community, making sure people didn't feel isolated. And for over two and a half years, yeah, almost it was, three years, yes, yes. It was successful, went really well. And as things opened up, we realized, you know, we need people to go back and build a community now in person again. So for me, that's been the sort of journey and um, where I am totally changed after that into my role at the city of Burnaby, which I love what I get to do as well. Actually, Vishad, that takes me to my next question. As a Burnaby Equity Diversity and Inclusion Manager, what specific projects are you passionate about? I, I'm very excited because my role actually sits within people and culture. You know, so it's been created to make sure that our staff, we have over four and a half thousand staff in the city of Burnaby. So it's a huge team. Okay. So how do we allow or create a space where folks can see themselves, feel included, feel celebrated, and feel like they are part of a team when it's so such a big team? So my role actually is within people and culture to make sure we create opportunities for learning opportunities to learn about any of the topics within the EDI space. We create internal communication that goes out on our internal portal mm -hmm. every Wednesday so we'll showcase different EDI initiatives or did mm -hmm. you know this is so and so heritage month this is what it means just a space for us to learn about each other we also have some in-person events we do some virtual events and it opens up conversations for folks to say you know for example we're celebrating Lunar New Year why are we celebrating it who is celebrating it right in that sort of space on two ways it works. The, somebody who is celebrating feels connected because they see their culture being celebrated in the workplace. For somebody who has come to the event to learn, comes to learn a little bit more about the event. And I think when we learn more about each other, automatically there's a newer building of respect. So it's kind of funny because what I always believe in in community, which is building community, here, it's the same concept, but building our workplace community. Okay. So I'm passionate about the fact that we can bring new initiatives. It's learning. It's teaching folks about other folks, teaching folks about maybe learning something about somebody that could be cultural, could be about a gender topic as well, and being able to support people. We also will have like team members to say, you know, Vishal, this is a new concept we heard about. I don't understand it. I'd like my team to know more about it so we can do what we do and do it better and therefore deliver better customer service to our community. Because at the end of the day, majority of our teams support community, you know, which is the city of Burnaby residents. So we would find the topic, we'll find a learning piece for them, we'll bring them probably a little initiative, we'll find them resources to support their team so they can go out and do what they do better. Excellent. Yeah. So, so 
do you go in every little projects and people are like, how can we do better? Like, how can we be more inclusive? And uh, so you go in there and you look at all the aspects yes. and you work all together with all the different teams. That's what I'm understanding. Correct. So I okay. will work. I am fortunate that I also get to work across departments. I work across departments. Parks and Rec will reach out to me sometimes. The library will reach out sometimes. You know, somebody wants to know about a new topic. Topic. I will do some research. Also, what's great is sometimes I'll get to work with other municipalities, other organizations to say, what are you all doing with this topic right now? What are you all seeing relevant? And then we'll bring it together to the city and we'll make sure that they can do what they want to do better and they're well informed. It could be on topics that are vast, it could be on accessibility, it could be on gender neutral washrooms, gender neutral language, you know, um, like maybe we have a customer service team as well that supports a customer service centric. You can call the city, you can find out about any topic that you want to find out, an event, what's happening, how do I pay my taxes, where do I go for rates? And that team has to be prepared to make sure they can answer the questions. The team also needs to make sure that when they're replying an email or if it's a conversation, we're using language that's appropriate, you know, and that serves our community better. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how we sort of do those pieces. And again, it's building and giving our team the confidence to go out and do what they do better. For example, if somebody is maybe at a community center serving a community member, they want to make sure that they have the right tools within their belt, you know, to deliver the service accurately. If somebody comes to say, for example, you know, I would prefer to use the other washroom, what is the conversation? Or on the other hand, if somebody comes to them and say, somebody's walked into the washroom, I don't recognize what gender they are, I'm a bit confused about this, what's going on? Then our team already has the answers and can support that situation. It's true, you touched on that, but language. Right now yes. that language has evolved so much and language is a tool. Yes. And uh, I like how um, there's training that is needed behind Correct. all this yeah. and involvement. And it's and the way it is now, it's going to be different in 10 years. And totally. it's always going to be evolving. And But language is the tool. That's it, right? I think at the end of the day, it's also a space where we know, like you mentioned, in 10 years, it could be different. In five years, it could be different. In two years, like I think the EDI space is ever changing and so fluid because we're learning new things all the time. But and the and the truth is, it is also sometimes hard for us to unlearn what we've learned for 20 years or what we've learned for 30 years. It's hard. So it's also having to know you have to have the patience with that as well. Like I can read a manual on something, but if I make a mistake, I can go back and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I use the wrong language. And I think people will respect that to say I'm sorry because they know we're all learning together in the space. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's true. So now, um, balancing a very extensive volunteering yeah. <laughs> and dedication <laughs> schedule, uh, um, how do you actually manage your time eff um, effectively? <laughs> oh, you know, I... There's so many times I also sit down with myself and I say to myself, okay, am I doing too much? You know, should I give myself a little bit more TLC? But I think the fortunate part is, for example, a supportive family. You know, like my husband recognizes that it's something that means a lot to me. He knows that going out in community and doing these pieces fills my cup. And therefore, if it fills my cup, I can fill somebody else's cup, including my family's cup. And he knows sometimes he has the patience with me because I've chosen when we're supposed to go to a movie, I've chosen to do some volunteer opportunity. And the fact that he always understands and so is my, does my son makes the biggest difference having that support when it comes to that sort of piece. You know, I know sometimes I even tell myself, okay, Vishal, next year, you're not going to serve the pack anymore. You need to have more time to yourself. And seven years later, I'm still back chair. I'm going. <laughs> of course. <laughs> because I think it does give me that happiness as well, where it fills my cup. So I take from that. I take from, yes, maybe it's a lot, 
but it's also giving me a lot back. Mm -hmm. And when my cup is full as a, as a human being, I feel I can give off the best version of me. Mm -hmm. And I think my community service definitely gives me that. Like, you know, when we used to go to those food drives or we used to go and help out dropping off food for seniors, those pieces like of contentment when it's done, does really, really make me feel When special. you touch and feel and witness, I have done this with you, it's a big eye opener. Yes. And uh, I, I would recommend everybody <laughs> to volunteer, go out there and go see what actually is happening at uh, the food bank or any other places. Um, it's hard to stop after when you start. That's, that, That's it. my vision yes, on it. So. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I think we all are different and we all want different things from those concepts of community and volunteering as well. And I think we also are lucky that we live in a community like the Tri-Cities or even whichever community you're in that does have a lot of offerings. Like if you're passionate about food insecurity or you're passionate about seniors or you're passionate about language, you can use your tools in that space. Also, what's so great now is also volunteering doesn't mean you have to go in person to do something. There can be a virtual opportunity. You can pick up a phone to somebody. You can just be a voice to a senior on the other side. There's opportunities that can be created for you. I think you just have to be willing to make the ask. That's a really good point. I like the way you say it because it's not everybody like me that has little kids True. at home after school. I'm teaching them mm -hmm. French. They're going to French school. I, my husband does not speak French, so I yes. have all the homework to do. And I still find time to volunteer, but knowing that I could actually have something designed to my needs totally. so I can give when I can. For anybody that has little ones, you know, out there mm -hmm. that maybe wants to uh, give a bit of time. And the pack is also a good way. Pack is a good way. And I have to time. admit to you, like one of the other pieces how I built myself into community as well was when we first joined, my son was at a elementary school on Vesel Plateau, Pine Tree Elementary. And we joined the school, he went in in grade one, and then we heard about the concept of the pack. I didn't even know of the concept. And that year I went and just helped the pack, whatever they were doing, when they had initiatives, I went and helped. You know, it was so great because on one end, my son liked it because he saw me in those spaces, right? And it meant a lot to him that, hey, Papa is in school, right? Papa's helping out, right? It meant a lot to him. But it built so many bridges. My pack friends that we have been with from Pine Tree Elementary Grade 1, we are still friends today. You know, we support each other. We still have a connection. Someone's fetching someone's kid. Someone's taking someone else's kid to something. We sometimes book sports activities together and we each other support structure. Mm. You know, so I definitely think like even for parents when it comes to something as the pack, you know, it sounds so simple, but it can really build a big connection. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so how can collective community efforts, especially during the challenges like COVID-19, create positive change? Oh, you know, and I think sometimes we don't look at how something so little can go such a far away. And during like 2020, 21, 22, you know, at the time of like COVID and the, you know, when we started coming back together, then apart again, it was very confusing for lots of individuals, you know, uh, many kids, you know, younger kids going to school, now I'm not going to school, then I'm at home. Parents are now having to stay at home. Like the world shifted at that time, right? For so many folks, for all of us as well. But I think what created positive changes, let's take an example. Let's look mm -hmm. at Tri-Cities United. Okay. Right, an initiative, four folks met, we chatted about doing something, move forward on it, and we did it. We created those opportunities in a virtual space where everybody still need to respectively be at home. From that, we then had the opportunity to meet in person, which changed also the feeling towards each other in growing connections. You grew a deeper connection with everyone. Mm -hmm. From there, we now have a page that still supports community in the best way possible. Yes. And I can tell you, from those events that we had even virtually, so Jen, you remember Ashney. We yes. both met in a virtual setting. Ashney had just moved to BC. We met her in a virtual meeting. Then we got to meet her in person. 
And the friendships have grown. We've had actually in our homes. Yes. We need now each other's family support. And she's been hosting one of her events, a chocolate making event. She showed everybody how to make uh, those beautiful chocolates. Exactly, right? So we built her community. Yes. We built our community. Just some opportunity that came from volunteering. That's a great That's example. just an example. Yes. I know also so many solid friendships, you know, at like Backpack Buddies. You'll have a group of Folks will come and volunteer together. They haven't met each other. They just signed up and they've come to volunteer in that space. From there, they've grown into like five-year five year groups of volunteering. They're now having dinners at each other's homes. They've grown their community with each other. They even support each other in one takes the other one's parents to a hospital yeah. to help them out. That's how it grows. Mm -hmm. It grows from there. It builds a new respect for each other as well once you know more about somebody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Vishad, I want to say thank you for joining us and also congratulations again. Thank for you. <laughs> your, because you're the one of the 21, 21, yes. 21 recipient of the Medal of Good Citizenship, which is not yeah. a lot of people in British Columbia. Yes, so congrats. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it was the ceremony. It was very emotional. Yes. Uh, it meant a lot How did it go? to me. It went beautifully. It was so well organized, you know, I want to commend, like, for example, our province, right, for putting this work forward and for recognizing individuals, yes. you know, so that's so great. Like we had our premier, David Ebby there, you know, he, the words that came out were so beautiful. We had MLAs there from each sort of community talking about the community person that was being the recipient. You know, also what was so great is as much as I enjoy community work, hearing what the other recipients do yeah. was also like this morning I woke up this morning feeling so inspired to actually want to maybe even do more. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> because hearing their stories, right? You're hearing their stories and you think, oh my God, like everyone is doing something amazing. Yes. Yes, you I know? totally get and that. And that was it was a very, very, very special award. Very oh, special. Amazing. Yeah. So I'm very excited and I'm meet your award today. I know I actually I wanted you to wear it. So <laughs> it looks really very Pretty. Yeah, I felt, uh, I do feel like when I put it on, I actually felt very honored to put it on. Oh, absolutely. Very honored. It's very official. It yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Vishad. Thank no. you for joining me on the Face to Face. No, Genevieve, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be around you. Yes. Your positive, wonderful <laughs> energy. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. From the Tri Cities Community Television, La Societe Francophone de Mayerville, and myself, Genevieve, thank you for joining us.